Hey folks, I'm Barry the Beard Guy. Along with my partner, Steve Miner, we form iBuyOldBeer.com. And that's a website just to spread the gospel, knowledge, restoration techniques, uh, you name it. Uh, trivia about Breweriana. What is Breweriana? Old beer stuff uh, related to the serving, dispensing, advertising of beer. Tap knobs, signs, photos, uniforms documentation, you name it. If uh, if it involved beer, we enjoy it. So today's video, and you can see I had to get into makeup. I've got a carefully cultivated public image. Had to uh, make sure I was presentable for camera. Just kidding. Is tap knobs. Not today's modern monstrosities that are dimensional and uh, stick up a foot and a half above the tap line. The earliest tap knobs, which were required by law in the... Uh, 1930s, I think the law came through. <laughs> Some of you legal beagles can probably name the statue that made ball knobs or tap knobs uh, legal or uh, they had to be on a dedicated line. You, It was illegal to advertise the wrong beer on a different tap line, but you had to have what they were called tap markers or knobs clearly advertising what was coming out of the line. So today we will learn about early beer tap knobs. Ready? Did you know that tap knobs were so popular that there's been books written about them by George Bailey, who was a member of a collecting organization, but rather than have physical examples, I'm just going to show you a few here. This is called a Newman glass knob. See how it's dimensional and had the lettering uh, in a recessed area done in paint. These things were super fragile. One drop on a tile or cement floor and they would chip or break. Uh, they also had just regular porcelain tap markers. These were about four inches across and they went above a tap line. This is called a cooler keg with K's, cooler, uh, sidewinder tap knob. And this had a telltale square instead of a threaded opening down here. And uh, you can just see some of the different varieties of tap knobs. This is called a tin can knob. I also have an example of that, but you can see here what a tin can knob was. And this has a celluloid face on it. You can see how it cracked, but a lot of times these are prone to chipping or cracking around the edge, but they're a little bit bigger. And the reason they're called a tin can knob is because they are made out of tin or metal. The Tap Knob book is divided into different categories and is a terrific resource for seeing all of the variations, colors, sizes of different breweries around the nation. And like I had said earlier, most of these ball knobs were made in the 1930s and 40s. And you can see from different breweries, uh, Philadelphia, when it was made, a relative rarity rating but I'm just gonna go through here some examples only exist in a tap knob face there's another one that's just a face of a tap knob here we go to cooler keg knobs and you can see their kind of distinctive uh, shape they're tilted slightly because they went on the tap line at an angle here's the sidewinder knobs these are Dacaware knobs. These I am very fond of and do collect. They have a convex face, and as you can see, with the painter advertising being on the front, uh, they sustained most of their wear on the face, and uh, they were not real durable. They were only made for oh, probably a three-year run, maybe, in the 30s, and are mostly uh, Midwestern brands. There are some international ones. Here are the tin can knobs, and uh, rather than show you this book, here's the Newman glass ones, and these are actually made of glass, so as I said, they're very fragile and pretty darn hard to find, but I'll show you kind of the anatomy of a tap knob. This is from Wisconsin, and the tap knob housing was black, sometimes colored, could be red, green, and such. This one has a celluloid face. As you can see, it's slightly convex and has a very unique pattern behind it, colorful. 
A lot of times these are hard to find without scratching on the front or cracks in the face and such. But this back housing, and as you can see down here, it's threaded to go into a tap knob line. Uh, I, I believe it's a standard half inch thread. These would go on the tap line and then they would pull forward to dispense beer. But you see these metal faces on this typical ball knob. This was done and then there was a Dura enamel or Dura color filled in back. And what is that? Well, we use it in the jewelry business and uh, it can match PMS colors or the Brewers brand colors, but it is a liquid that flows in here and it requires a wall to stop it or something raised. So in order to use this, this would be made in metal. A person would go in with a small, it almost looks like a hypodermic needle, and fill in the white in these letters. But as you can see, they have a raised wall to contain the color. Then this tap knob face was then put in an oven and cured. So here you can see actually, <laughs> easy for me to show, but the tap knob face. And this was a metal disc, slightly convex, with an attachment behind it. And what they would do was place this in the tap knob housing. I'm sorry, I'm terrible on the camera here, but all right. And then a screw would come up through the base and go in here, attaching this tap knob face to the tap knob. So a lot of times you will find these inserts, and I'll show you the example of the Dura color here. Sorry. All right. See that red stuff and how it flows around the letters? That's your Dura color or Dura enamel, and you can see if it uh, sustains damage or wear, a lot of times this stuff chips out. But these ball knobs, even the inserts, are collectible. A lot of times uh, some of the companies would make them as badges or buttons and apply a, oh, a pin back to them or uh, something that you could pin them on your shirt. But these little discs were fairly easy to make and they would go in the tap knob housing for a ball knob. Here I will show you a complete ball knob on a wood base for display. This is a <laughs> figural tap knob made out of pewter or cast metal and the base is broken off this. Like I say I'm just concentrating on the older tap knobs here and then here we have examples of 1950s knobs and as you can see they changed direction here this is kind of a crossways uh, rounded rectangle these are two from minnesota royal 58 from duluth and fountain brew from wisconsin but those are acrylic tap knobs and as you can see they're double faced so the consumer and the bartender could both see the brands on these but all of these are collectible i love them Steve Miner loves them at iBuyOldBeer.com. Easy for me to say. And I just wanted to let you know, here, what I'm doing, before I quit this video, is what I've done is I have found a few of these inserts here. And what I've done is had these ball knob housings made at great expense. You have to order 100 minimum, but I found a few of these inserts way back when, and then had a guy at work measure with calipers uh thank god for engineers he uh made me an electronic file that i was able to send to the company to get these reproduction ball knobs made and they're great uh i mean these discs aren't very attractive or captivating on their own but when placed in a ball knob like this i'm sure you agree with me it's a pretty cool little beer display so that's my two cents on beer tap and ball knobs this morning. I hope you found it informative. And if you're a housewife out there that's found a shoebox of these uh, in a closet, by all means, contact me. I'll give them a good home, a loving home, and pay more than fair price for them. So, real nice. Putting my hand in there. I wish we had a video crew here that could do a better job than me with my phone sitting on my couch in the morning. 
I've got some coffee to drink here. I hope you found that video somewhat informative. Like I say, if you come across tap knobs, have questions on them, I don't know if you're serious enough to buy the book, but you can contact me, the guy with the book. I can look up the information and let you know more about them. I'm Barry the Beer Guy from iBuyOldBeer.com. We're nuts about brewery and a old beer stuff. So if you have any, have questions, contact us. We'll let you know. Have a good day.